Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We provide fan-oriented and analytic discussions on a variety of animated shows, movies, and anime, including Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, and Rick and Morty. I'm Dylan Eisen, and today I'm joined by Delaney Stilwell. Hello. Today, Delaney and I will be discussing the latel- latest episode of Rick and Morty Total Rick All, the brilliant um, episode that aired last night. Um, as, as always, um, the content of this podcast is age-appropriate to the... Uh, show that we are discussing so this podcast discussion may be for mature audiences the rest of our podcast basically are for all ages though um and also spoilers for this episode and all of rick and morty um and you can find everything about this podcast at overlyanimated.com but i want to get right into it because you know i'm just so in love with this episode delaney what did you think of total recall this episode is incredible oh i just i might um, last night I was thinking that this might be my favorite episode ever. Ever? Possibly. Of anything? Uh, no, or of Rick and Morty? Of Rick and Morty. Yeah. I, I mean, it's hard. That's, what did you like I about have, this one? It just one, I'm a sucker for zany characters. Like, yes, great. Um, I don't know, like, the gags in this episode were just so high quality. And then just the characters themselves were just really funny. And we don't usually get to see Rick in this kind of, like, I'm not really sure what's going on situation, which is really interesting. Yeah, that's a good and, point. And I don't know, I just loved, also, like, Jerry, like, I, what is it with this show and me suddenly liking Jerry? Like, what is going on? The Jerry storyline's been pretty on point. <laughs> on point this So season. great. Oh, yeah. this is this is even better than Jerry Daycare, which I didn't think was possible. I didn't know we could top Jerry Daycare. That's true. I, I do think the Jerry stuff of this episode is even better. Um, yeah, every every once in a while, there's like an episode of television or just a entry into a media in general that just like so completely blows me away, and it reminds me why I'm just so in love with with you know, just television in general, talking about it, discussing it critically, and like this is it for me. This is. The best episode of television this year, uh, pretty easily. I think it's the best episode of Rick and Morty. Uh, there's just so much going for it. It's incredibly hilarious. I think I feel like there's at least ten or fifteen gags from this episode, which are the be- which are like mostly better than anything that's aired this year. Um, just the this is what I was hoping that we'd get this season. Like I was like, okay, maybe later in the season we'll get to this high high quality. But no, here it is. We take we go all in on a concept. Um, this show is just so intricate in its, in its humor and its concepts. And it just, this just reminds me of like how, me falling in love with the show in season one. I mean, really the time that I knew this show was special, I was watching, I think it was the, uh, M. Night Shyamalan aliens episode or no, no, it was the inception one. I think I assume that was a different one. No, that yeah, was that with, one. Um, that was that one. Yeah. With, uh, Freddie. Yeah, with the scary, scary, scary Terry. Scary Terry. Yeah, that scary Terry was when I knew that this show was like really special. It just goes, keeps going on gags so quickly, um, and it just gets more and more intricate and more and more hilarious in a way which I don't know I've, if I've experienced on a different type of humor show before, uh, maybe ever. And this episode reminds me of Scary Terry. Like it's, it just gets like the Scary Terry is uh, Mr. Poopy Pants in this in this one. Yes, right? like he, that that everything they Mr. do with Poopy him is Butthole. So, Mr. Poopy Butthole. He calls himself uh, this Poopy Pants. I think at one point. Yeah, so that's true. yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. That's a affectionate nickname for him. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, guess. this uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole is. I mean, just everything involving him. Everything involving everything. Really, I love all the cutaways, all the characters. Uh, there's just so much here, and even with all the cutaways, they still manage a few typical gags, like cutaways from with the with the Walmart 3ds's. Um, that was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was in this episode. What's so striking about that scene is that like all the flashbacks have a have a purpose for the plot before, but this one's just there. There's like no characters that come out of that one. It's <laughs> yeah. just it's just it's there. just Rick. Yeah. Oh, so I don't know. I this is like this is like ten out of ten television. It's, it's near. Per- it's perfect. Everything about it. It's so incredibly wonderful. And um, this is like one of the best shows on television, if not the. I mean, this nothing reaches this level of quality. No. Okay, let's get into it. Um, so there's like a lot <laughs> here to go over. A lot of new named characters and ones that don't get names, but we're not just gonna like say hey remember this guy and then talk about it i guess we'll go through the it uh plot point by plot point we start off with um uncle steve in the kitchen and then rick comes out and shoots him so like what are you thinking when it's like okay so i feel like okay one thing i want to note is that this episode i've seen it three times now it it does get worse like 
because the experience of watching it for the first time is really special. Just like, I don't know, the show is really first viewing oriented, I feel like, because you, oh, yeah. you lose like the shock or surprise of it. Um, oh, and that's like, what, that's a lot of what the gags go off of. Yeah, it's like, so, well, like it's just the randomness. You like well, predict the randomness after the. Well, first it's viewing. like rewatching this first scene like completely takes the magic out of it because like that's what they're playing off of in this first scene is that you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like you're sitting here like, who's Steve? And then like you're like, okay, something's wrong. Like he hasn't been here the whole time. And that's also like a like that's a gag that happens like that happens in Pitch Perfect, the first one, where they're like, what are you talking about? We've been here the entire time. So, like, we're, at first you're like, oh, it's that gag. And then he comes in and shoots him, and you're yeah. like, oh! Like, so, like, if you rewatch, that completely, like, that ruins that entire part. Yeah, it's still it's still a pretty good pre-it opening. Um, Steve wasn't real. He's a real piece of shit. Um, <laughs> that was good. And they've been tracking these alien parasites in from space. I like, I guess I like this episode in concept, because you'd feel like there'd be real-life ramifications. It's It's incredible. Uh, it's finally something resulting from them just space traveling constantly uh yeah so i guess what's this episode parodying this is like episodes doing a few things i I felt like for me the first thing i thought of was that this is like the parody of the sci-fi like duplicate being kind of concept it's like how do you tell who's who and stuff like that yeah Um, like um doctor who in the flesh interesting interesting yeah and um but it's also doing uh well, the it's a bottle episode like they stay in one place the entire time although you know we cut away from it constantly and it's also kind of a uh parody of the clip show because we're just getting a lot of that's what they'd be clips at i feel like that's like the third of the three um like the av club review this week as i reference every week uh is by the normal guy zach handlin and he, he compares this to like community's clip show and of course you want to care, compare the show to community all the time because dan Harmon, but uh yeah it's it, there's a little bit of a clip show on it i mean we just constantly get different memories and things and it's the it's like a parody of a clip show because obviously it's things that didn't actually happen previously yeah and i do think um like the more important like what they're parodying is the whole like who's who who's mm. real like that's definitely like the primary yeah and it like goes to like an absurd extent as yes satirization is one as they complete as they continue to multiply yeah, and as they kill them all at the end. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so we get to the real, the real star, the real. Um, what was the guy's name from episode two? Um, the assassin. Oh. Blanking. Oh no. Yeah. Oh. Um. His his elements of uh, K dot kills. That's what I remember. Yes. Hashtag K dot kills. Um, the uh, mis- there was no hashtag though, so I don't know. Can this up the hand? This be better than episode two without a hashtag clearly placed in the episode? Uh, I mean, it's tough, but I think just... Oh, you think yes? Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Poopy oh, Butthole. Uh, Michael. Something. <laughs> Mr. Poopy Butthole is um, there, and uh, I don't even know how to describe He's like a banana thing? I don't know. Yeah, like he's... Yeah, he's kind of like... He kind of... Uh, Justin Roiland uses the same, almost the same voice as Mr. Mixies for him, and... Uh, then we get the cry. He's just there, and it's like, oh, okay. So good. That it's, my mind. The setup for this is just incredible because we get him here, and then we get him in the credits throughout everything. Although there is one credit scene with uh, the butler too. Uh, oh, I missed, I, I didn't yeah, that. it's just one of them. Though. Mr. Poopy Butthole's in everyone though, and then I, yeah, no, it's great. and then we come back, and then Rick's like six people, Mr. Poopy Butthole's included, and we're just setting it up the entire time for him to be revealed to be a parasite. But then no. Uh, it's so good. It's pretty perfect. What's what's perfect about it though is because like you'd think it'd get predictable, but they like don't show him for like twenty minutes. So yes. So it's yeah, I, it's genuinely surprising at the end. You know, then the end, you're just like, wow. Now I feel sad. Uh, Rick puts up the blast shields on the house, and that's like kind of the setup. It's at, the episode moves so fast; it's kind of you don't realize that this is like the concept of the episode for a little while, like that. They're stuck in there and because Rick yeah. put up the blast shields, but that is what is going on. Um, our first flashback is as there was them stuck in an elevator after the uh, the Hulk musical, which apparently actually happens because Mr. Poopy Butthole is real. Yes, <laughs> apparently, and he was there. 
and uh, Jerry has Hulk hands on and punches the elevator buttons, which don't make just don't make them move. <laughs> and the Hulk hands don't make him stronger, but friendship does. I saw the musical. <laughs> <laughs> everything in that like so now this episode actually has everything like we even have an elevator gag like this that's is true, too much true. uh and morty has hulk hands on and ha- or no morty had the uh extra large drinks because of the hulk he just got yeah that. no he was he was <laughs> clutching his junk the yeah. entire time because he had to pee they would <laughs> but would, would the hulk musical only sell extra large drinks uh, to be in theme <laughs> That yes. seems like a little much. And then we so have c- cousin Nikki, who's walking here on top. He's not actually walking here, though. He's on top of the elevator <laughs> and <laughs> to save them. It's just completely parody New York. That's what's so good. Yeah, like New Jersey, New York kind of thing. He's from Brooklyn. <laughs> Apparently in Brooklyn, he's say we're walking here. And then he shoots him. And then we have another flashback to the old Nazi submarine. Um, <laughs> like what even? <laughs> yeah. I, you often wonder how they come up with these types of things where we meet Mr. Beauregard, the butler. Uh, the, I won't lie, the Nazi was really funny because he was like, "Yeah, think before you talk shit." And then yeah, like, <laughs> think before you really talk funny. shit. The big gag was, "What? Oh, we have a word for you in uh, in Brooklyn or whatever, right?" But Cousin Nick. He's like, "I'm a Nazi." Yeah, like, what? what else could you tell you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that scene was pretty great. I don't know who voiced the Nazi. Maybe it was just. I mean, it was I'm hard sure. to understand the Nazi, but all that was important was that I understood. Like, think before you talk shit. Think like, before you talk shit, yeah. Uh, Jer- the third flashback, Jerry is stuck in the stairs. And then uh, Mr. Beauregard frees him with uh, marmalade, yeah. And then we that, meet... Also, Fred- Jerry would get stuck in the stairs. Yeah. it's it's impo- That seems impossible, but yeah. Uh, we meet Frankenstein, Sleepy Jerry. Um, I thought it was Sleepy Gary. Sleepy Gary, yeah. And then we go to the... Um, to the prom with uh mr Bo with uh I think mr beauregard yeah yeah with uh morty that was so which weird. is just absurd and then photography raptor though what i think, think they were of... making fun of like um oh, what was the name of that show it was on like teen, like old nickelodeon uh like nick at night stuff i can't remember very old show but like anyway like the, they're, they're making fun of like literally every show with a butler ever yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, and then they have the thing later with the, the butler did it, yeah. Uh, photo- what do you think of Photography Raptor? That was, I was like, it's, I don't get it, but it's great. <laughs> I don't get it? There's nothing to get, he just takes pictures, and he's no, a raptor. No, it's really funny, like, I, was, like I, I think that one might be my favorite, like, they was, he just appeared, and he was just taking pictures. Yeah. And, like, just this, just saying Photography Raptor, like, it's really yeah. good. Uh, Rick needs to write down six again. So there's Pencil Vester. Okay, what's the deal with Pencil Vester's name? Is this? Am I, I? I'm trying to figure out what this is a reference to, and I had no idea. Uh, I mean, all I can think of is like Sylvester, but like, what's well, like Pen Sylvester? Yeah. Like, but I don't know. I don't. I can't. Figure I mean, out what I guess it's because like it's just such a cute little pun. I don't know. It's the cute pencil. Um, yeah. Poopy butthole's not in any of their pictures, uh, but neither is. Um, Beth. Beth, but but uh, Summer isn't with. It doesn't have pictures with any of her family because uh, it's not like we're Mormon or dying. <laughs> yeah. I laughed. That yeah. was a good one. <laughs> it was a good one. Um, yeah, but then and then we start the brilliant uh, recurring gag of suspecting Summer. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. <laughs> She's like it's like all the absurd characters, but uh, Summer. But Rick goes after Summer first. Um, and it's like we've never seen your we've never seen your imaginary friend Tinkles, and we get my favorite uh, cutaway to Tinkles, the magical ballerina lamb, um, <laughs> to going to Never Bedtime Land, I think. Yeah, it was like Never yeah. Sleep Land yeah. or something. And uh, they have this this song, and then there's the rapper, and they're raving. It's yeah. so good, <laughs> and then and then they come in, and she's with the flash. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's my favorite one. Tinkles is my fave, obviously. Probably voiced by Tara Strong. I don't know. I couldn't. There's a lot of a lot of voices here. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, Tinkles with the anime eyes. Um, <laughs> it's I don't know. I just I just love love this. Also, Summer's like what sixteen. <laughs> Yes. It's a little old for the for Tinkles. No, no, it's great. It's perfect. Like I'm completely under, like I'm like yes, summer. I You're get like, you. Yes, summer. Like, okay. Like, no, it just it would, like it didn't surprise me at all. I'm like this is in character. Yes, it does I'm seem like, in character. Yeah. Um, we get Hammer Eye and Amish Cyborg. Cyborg. Amish Cyborg was pretty great. Yeah. Um, and then we get the bar- barbecue flashback where 
Um, I feel like this is the most uh, Justin Roiland this show thing, with he's like, look at me, I'm Tom Cruise from um, Cuisine. From Cuisine, yeah. It's like I looked up its cocktail, but uh, <laughs> that's. I feel like we've had this exact thing before with Rick Nada getting the reference right and like being unsure of if it's if it's right. Pretty or much. Right. Also, it's refer- why he's making burgers. Why is he referencing Tom Cruise like being a bartender? You know. It's so good. Like, yeah. It's such a Rick thing. It's very Rick. Very also, his, his um, apron was great. Uh, what was his apron? It was suck my, and then it was D, and then there was oh, like yeah. two blades. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it's like, I appreciate this. You appreciate this. And the end is, it's like, a wallet, where's Watto page? Um, <laughs> that was okay. That but, actually, that might be the. I don't know. You, it's you Nintendo. Us. Like those are some pretty good gags. And then of course it's he points out that it's a commercial break. This is like the that tenth time the show has done this. Yes. Including, we'll see you next season at the end of the last season. <laughs> like there is no, there is no fourth wall. Like <laughs> we're not breaking it. It's just it was never there. That was all just Act One. Like what? <laughs> so, so much. much. <laughs> so much. Uh, okay, we come back to the. Uh, they're suspecting Rick, I guess, and yeah, yeah, because the obviously the parasites are trying to turn on him, and we get the uh, they get the, Rick, we get the flashback of because like he's all he always overreacts. Yeah, Rick coming in uh, with Walmart 3ds's. They're only one forty nine ninety nine, and they give you a fifty dollar <laughs> gift card after, so they're only one ten. It's so after good. taxes. <laughs> It's even funnier because, like, I literally just stopped working at Walmart. It's just so funny. And oh my can, god! And you can flip them for what was it two two thirty two twenty yes. at least. <laughs> then he runs and gets all the money from the safe. Oh my god! And he says, "Nintendo, give me free stuff." I, <laughs> so I, I think that's what I think that's what pushes us over <laughs> the Where's Waldo pages because he says, "Nintendo, give me free stuff." Yeah. Like that one. They just sent it over the top. I feel like, on one hand, I don't know. This is almost out of character for Rick. Why does he care about Nintendo things? I mean, I guess him overreacting makes sense. Um, just, this actually doesn't surprise me. I don't know. Like, I just. I mean, this is this is in character for like almost every every person who like sees this deal is like, and I can I flip it for money? You know, like that's a very yeah. common thing. But like, oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, and, and like, I said, like, like I said, like I said before, there's Nintendos. We can just play Nintendo. Yeah, games. No, yeah, you know, I'll just just play Nintendo games. Yeah, um, 3ds good investment, by the way. I have one. I have the uh, original. Same. I also have one. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I actually think the majority of us on the podcast <laughs> have a 3ds. We're, that that joke was right in our wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah, that was that was directed at us. Yeah, and also like uh, yeah, like I said earlier, there's there's no character that comes out of this flashback. It's just there. I don't know. It's, it's so good. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to say about the that we're gonna, you know, is that there's no one reason this episode is incredible is that there's no B plot. That's kind of the thing. I mean, there's uh, the closest thing is uh, the Jerry thing that we're about Jerry. to talk about, but uh, it's it's just uh, it's just all one thing. And like the the biggest weak point of a lot of the previous episodes have been that the B plot with um, the parents has been uh, not as good as the A plot. But um, everything's one thing here, and it's. Um, at like a blazing pace and it's uh, an incredible it's uh just comes together so well it's just Whole stellar thing. like yeah. so clearly we just have to keep everyone together except no not really because we need to go on more space adventures i mean they can they can come too i, I mean I, jerry, okay, jerry I came for one of them why can't beth come now i need i need to see beth in space i yeah. want to know what kind of sassy heart surgeon thing she'd get into horse surgeon horse surgeon <laughs> uh jerry is talking to sleepy gary and it's like how do i know i'm real Sleepy Gary. Okay, so let's talk about this situation going on with Sleepy Gary, because it's just absurd. (laughs) Sleepy Gary is married to Beth, and Jerry is his best friend. So, like, this is, I guess this is playing on Jerry's insecurities, but, like, the the first, (laughs) one of the first parasites that there just is married to Beth, and Jerry just accepts that immediately. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Yeah, I I didn't get that at first, like... It's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, there's not much to get, it's just, I don't know. He, well, I just meant, like, I didn't, like, make, like, it wasn't until, like, I don't know, like, it was just, like, what? They do say it a few times to try to hammer yeah, it off. No, they do, because, like, it, I mean, because, I mean, it's, I mean, they have to create this in, like, so little time for you to, like, yeah. accept what's going on. Yeah. Uh, they, and then we get the vacation flashback, which is oh my incredible. God. Um, oh, my God, so they're, good. They're filming Star Wars down there. We should, we should go check it out. Down the coast. Yeah, down the coast. What? Like, They're on what? a boat. Like, <laughs> Dude, so, what? like, wow. In an indescript location. Um, yes. You, I thought I thought France because of, uh, they said vacation to France in the beginning, but not, maybe not connected. 
Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll see Chewbacca. That line, I cracked up at that all three times <laughs> no, I watched this. Yeah. Like what? <laughs> no, it's so it's so great because really? like obviously this is like Jerry is like and he's and like I'm just like it like it reminds me a lot of. Um, when Jerry was in the simulation and like everything that happened in the simulation, like I'm not like this, this is like this is like Jerry's fantasy. Like yeah. this is what this is. <laughs> Maybe we'll see Chewbacca, and, <laughs> and then they make Sweet. out and stuff. It's great. But ne- but oh, ne- what killed me was sleeping Gary's like pants were undone when he like came, and I was like I can't handle this right now. <laughs> he wasn't in his sleepy uh, outfit yeah, in the flashback. Was, no, he was just Gary. Hat. Sleepy Gary, voiced by uh, Matt Walsh from Veep. Uh, who's the press secretary in Veep and is great. And I don't know why. Like, this this episode has Matt Walsh and Keith David in, like, very minor roles. And it's like, okay, we'll bring in these guest stars for, like, one minute of dialogue, if that. Keith David has even less. Uh, and, yeah, I don't know. This flashback was incredible. And then it's, like, not in the house when they come back. Never in the house. Was... Yeah. Oh, my God. Why is Jerry living with them if... If he's his I, best friend, I don't get it. Okay. Oh my god, I don't know. Or is he? Is he? Is he living with them? Yeah, he is living with them. I don't because he's in the house. Yeah. Oh my god! I just there's so much going on. Rick's been paranoid since Nam with uh, Frankenstein's monster. Also, like, wow! Can we like so so typical? Like, I probably. Probably could have predicted a flashback like this. Yeah, uh, Frankenstein's monster, monster voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson, iconic voice. Of the lion turtle and avatar, yeah. Yes. Uh, and uh, then we get a speech by Reverse Giraffe, who has long legs, <laughs> short neck. Well, this is this is Keith David, Keith David in this season of Community, um, and he just has this one speech, and then that's it about uh, how they're how they should all. I wonder if these parasites are like planning all these actions, if they're like a hive mind, or if they just are independently coming up with the, their plan here. That's, that's a good question. To go after I, Rick, you know. They don't seem, they don't really seem to, like, communicate a lot with each other. Yeah. They just it's talk, all, to, they never talk to each other. Yeah, they talk to, uh... Yeah. It's all about bombarding them, so maybe they're just kind of, like, whatever. Right? Yeah. Just kind of... Trying to get on Rick and stuff. Um, yeah. When then they point out the absurdities of uh, all the main characters. Of course, we're going to get the segment now. Um made up sounding catchphrases for Rick, um, including <laughs> two real ones, right? And like but so yes. I was wondering if this was actually a flashback at first. Um because it's like, oh, is it these I've heard these catchphrases before, but I feel but I think they're not actual scenes that aired and then of course we get into made up ones too. Yeah. Um like AIDS and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which was probably the best one. And lick 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 my balls, which is great because referencing the un the uh, pilot from like eight yes. years ago or something you yes. should go watch on youtube um, yeah everyone go watch go watch yeah it's it's pretty that was pretty great he is an incredible i appreciated the reference to rick having an incredibly vague backstory because yeah, I, no, bas- I basically that said good. that last week i think or something yeah, no, that's good. um and morty then, i'm it, your dad yeah. are, you? <laughs> are you yeah <laughs> that, was so that was good uh morty's an implausibly naive adolescent boy with an old jewish comedy writer's name which is true <laughs> accurate <laughs> Um, so then we go, but then, uh, okay, Morty takes Rick into the garage to presumably shoot him. I feel like this I'm is not like, doing this in front of Ben Sylvester. Like, he's just like, so yeah, not in front of Ben Sylvester, but they take the baby. Yeah, like, <laughs> what yeah. is it about the stupid pencil? <laughs> they take, like... they take Baby Wizard in, though. Baby <laughs> Wizard can see it, but not Ben Sylvester, yeah. Nope. Maybe guess he's a wizard. He's seen things. He's seen things. Yeah, I feel like this is a flaw in the part. The third, the third time I was watching this episode, I finally started to try to see it from the villain's point of view. <laughs> I was like, why are they allowing Morty and Rick to go in there with only two of them? You know. But I feel at the same time, I feel like if they, if Morty suggests this, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, do it. You know, go along, yeah. take take what and they can I, get. I mean, and we're used to the whole Morty's an idiot and never figures anything out. So yeah. like, this is safe. Yeah, seems safe. If they're watching from our point of view, um, uh, more Rick calls Morty a whiny little piece of shit. I think, yeah, yes, which is good. And he's then, like, I have six good memories. Yeah, he's a do it motherfucker, do it. And um, but then Which I think it's the third time like Rick has done that. <laughs> yeah, that's that seems that seems like that's happened before. But then baby, they shoot him. Baby wizard was a parasite. Says whatever the other thing was. What was I, this? Yeah, <laughs> we didn't get a name for. Him. I, no, there's no name. And then he's like, he set me up with my wife. Yeah. 
the voice on him was great. I don't know who did that, but it was yeah, great. Yeah, no, it was good. Um, then the only pleasant memories of the parasites and uh, montage of oh yeah of um, Morty getting the uh, bad end when hanging out with Rick, right? Yep. And just just I don't I don't even know. The, one of them is him pushing him down the stairs in front of girls, and then there's no. like something with a volcano. I don't know what else is there. It's... Um, and then, like, he's being dragged away by, like, the monster lobster thing while yeah. he's drinking with some, like, alien babes. Oh, yeah, babes. With, with alien babes, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then they go in, Mrs. Refri- Mrs. Refrigerator, are you even real? Um, she's like, yeah, of course, uh, cut to roller coaster. We couldn't stop screaming. That was pretty good. That was, that was good. Yeah. And um, what, <laughs> then after Mrs. Refrigerator, the next most absurd one is Summer. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Summer? So good. <laughs> Um, what did, what did we get for Summer? Um, Summer, uh... Oh, M- Morty, yeah. Yeah, Morty was, like, watering the grass. And she whatever. just comes out and kicks him in the balls, yeah. She just in the balls. Yeah, then he's like, no, she's my bitch of a older sister, which I'm yeah. not a fan of using that word, but I guess it made sense here. Um, yeah, I mean, it makes sense for, like, he's a 14-year-old Yeah, boy. it makes sense in context. Still not a fan of that word, but yeah. Um, b- uh, Summer figures out Beth, uh, because... She was drunk on picture day and hit her, hit oh, her with the bottle. Oh my god, that, yeah. that one. Oh man. Yeah. It was too real. Too real. <laughs> Just, oh my god. Uh, summer, I've always loved... Oh yeah, so... And I want the police to take me away. Yeah, I want the police to take me <laughs> Yeah, that was a very summer thing to say. It was. Yeah. Uh, but I then, really shouldn't laugh, but like... It was pretty funny, you know. And then we get... Um, Tinkles, no, not Tinkles. Summer, I've always loved you. And then she's like, "Yeah," <laughs> and shoots her. Wait, was that before or after when Summer like looks at Morty and then? That was before. Like they get that after that, yeah. Um, and then and then she looks at Morty. Like some now Summer has to figure out that Morty's real. And then she walks in after forgetting <laughs> the concert ticker tickets to masquerading. Oh, He's like, "I do it everywhere. Stop shaming me. <laughs> You're not the victim here." <laughs> You're the victim yeah, here. Yeah. And then the best part is he's I, like, I hate you. I was thinking of your friend Grace. I, and she runs screaming. <laughs> oh fucking God. Morty. Like, what the, what the fuck? No, was, that, was, that was too good. Like, that, was, that was so... I just love that part. I was thinking of your friend Grace. Like, that was so good. Like, that was the only way to make it worse for Summer, and he did it. Why does Morty have to do it everywhere? <laughs> oh, I mean, he, this is the same boy who, like, fucked a, like, alien robot and then had a child, okay? Like, let's, we have to think about this. He's having a, uh, very fucked up, uh, puberty here, so. Yes. You know, oh things like, so we're blaming this on Rick, basically, is what you're saying. Pretty much. Him having to masturbate in the kitchen. Immediately after <laughs> the parents leave and some Yeah, after everyone leaves. Immediately <laughs> after that, yeah. Oh my god. Fuck you. I hate you and I was thinking about your friend Grace. Yeah, that was pretty wonderful. Um, then we have Ghost in a Jar. Um, the butler did it. Did they kill Mr. Beauregard? The go- what do you think of Ghost in the Jar? I love Ghost in the Jar's voice. I d- I did like Ghost in the Jar. Ghost in the Why Jar. Why did they have to kill him? He was just sitting there. I know, but he oh. was a parasite. I I also enjoyed the like the parasite. <laughs> Are you explaining to me that he was a parasite? No, I meant like he was also like the jar. Like he. Was, oh yeah. <laughs> like he was. The I mean, jar he was and Ghost the in a Jar, but he but Rick took him out of the jar and then shot him. Yeah, and then like the the jar like fell away too because i don't understand the mechanic couldn't rick have just shot the jar then i mean he could have but i think he just wanted to open it (laughs) this is again rick like created a creature and killed it with a laser so yeah he did do that last episode i'm not surprised he opened the jar yeah though i did appreciate that ghost in the jars thing was that like he and he was always good at understanding like obscure comedy yeah it was good i'm glad they explained that uh uh, I guess I killed the butler. I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, need, I needed that. I'm glad they explained that. I wouldn't have gotten it. So thank you, Ghost in the Jar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. I'm sorry you had to die, Ghost in the Jar. Yeah, uh, but then they come in, and um, Beth comes into Jerry and Sleepy Gary, and Jerry's still convinced he's a parasite. That's a very Jerry thing, yeah. I feel like they got yeah, that no. one right. Very um, Jerry. But then they have the flashback of Jerry hiding in the car with the homeless guy with the <laughs> crash bottle. Jerry like, what is, the fuck, Jerry? <laughs> Jerry is the absolute oh, worst. Oh, my God. Yeah. Also, where was he while she was doing getting groceries? Like, what what was he doing? I don't know. Like, why weren't you carrying the bags? Like, why weren't you? Maybe helping? he was, like, and suck. we just saw part. I don't know if we we're supposed to think about that. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, he's literally the worst. Yeah. So. so that was then. That was the end of that. 
And then at the dinner table, they killed every good person. No, in the no, house. the whole I have to forget about. <laughs> oh yeah, to spare it out, sleepy guy. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. It was good. Um, then we get kind of get this real statement on how they're all terrible people and how, yep. yeah, because they killed every good person in the house. And but Mr. Poopy Pants is still there. So Mr. <laughs> Poopy, Poopy Butthole, then this Poopy Pants needs uh, whatever they're eating. You know, a pork chop. Yeah, but then. Beth shoots him, and he bleeds. <laughs> it's annoying. The best part is he's like, is something wrong, Beth? Is something wrong, just... Beth? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it was it was incredible. And then the best, probably the best animation the show has ever had after is Beth goes into the kitchen and gets wine and is, like, fumbling with it. To pre- like, yes. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Considering this, this show uses, like, this um, kind of somewhat mediocre animation software that in-house to make this, that, that was the level of emotions displayed. I mean, the absurdity of it, too, but in this scene is just incredible. Yeah. With Beth no, drinking was, the wine. It was incredible. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. And then, and then of course, Mr. Poopy Butthole is bleeding out. Yeah. And, like, the blood is pumping from his chest. Or whatever. I guess it's his chest. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he's a banana, so. Yeah, whatever, whatever he is. Um, yeah. And Jerry calls 911 and stuff. Physical therapy. and the, in My the, wife just, just killed a, just shot family, a family, family, long time yeah. family friend. <laughs> uh, in the, in the <laughs> like, stinger. Who makes a 911 call like that? No one. <laughs> I mean, what else are you going to say? So good. In, in the stinger. Um, oh, my. <laughs> we get... Uh, Mr. Poopy Pants doing the same bars thing that Cora did. <laughs> Cora, yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> that's the therapy. that's the first thing I thought of. Like, oh my god, oh nice, my god, really? Nice, nice I Cora did. reference here. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. That's um, but good. he's doing physical therapy, and he's uh, is he still mad at me? He's not pressing charges. That's the I shot you equivalent of not being mad at you. Um, <laughs> but then the incredible thing at the end, the physical therapist coming out saying, he says he's sorry you didn't have bad memories of him. And yeah, and then, oh my god! And then like she like runs away crying. Yeah, and, like Jerry. oh, it was so good. That was incredible. Yeah. Also, we're getting to this point where I'm like, wow, do we have to end every episode on this like terribly depressing point? <laughs> That's true, but no. But he says one of his catchphrases though at the end, one of his new catchphrases. Yeah. Yeah. That- and that and like that's the way the news goes and yeah. it's like I, i'm upset because like that's not how he used to say it and it like messes me up did he uh, has, has he even said that one before well he's like and he usually says in a way we go oh yeah true and so it's the same tone oh man it's like these are the like, things to be worried about here yeah it is okay so there's so much there there's like yeah just i, spe- I mean the highlight is everything with mr poopy butthole which by the way like the name <laughs> like what <laughs> what <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know what to do with that. But yeah, I just I mean, like you get the uh, just I, the, he's is I, he's obviously not coming back next episode. But like, the, it's just so absurd, which is why they it, they pull it off so well. And it's so shocking because yes. it just doesn't make any sense. The, and the build up for it was just the build up is great. And it's like, that's the thing. It's like, oh, I should have seen this going. No, you shouldn't have. It makes no sense that he's real. <laughs> no what sense. are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, if he shows up in another episode, though, I will probably die. Like if he's like. Like, just somewhere in the middle of the season, he just appears. Yeah. He's like, he's done with his recovery now. Yeah, yeah, like, and he, like, ends up being the villain or something for, like, one of the episodes. I could, I could eh, see that. that's too, I, I, I could see that in a different show. Probably not this one, though. Maybe. Too much, too much that. continuity for this show. That's true. I mean, he might randomly appear. I want to know if they're going to keep him in the credits, though, like, just for an episode or two. No, I don't think so. <laughs> that was really funny, That though. was really funny, though. Sigh. So, yes. That was, that was total Rick all. Just so... Actually, this the, the the title actually made sense. Did it? I mean, not in like the not in like the. It's not referencing re- the movie. I mean, it's not referencing the movie, but like the phrase "Total Recall" makes sense. Kind of. Uh, I mean, it's close. It's closer than anything else. I mean, it's closer than Morty Night Run. Run. That didn't make <laughs> yeah. any sense. Yeah. But yeah, no. This was. I mean, it's. I don't know. I wish this episode had a more um, intuitive title, but I guess that's okay. Uh, I mean, we can't have we can't have titles that make sense. Nope. Nope. That's not allowed. Wait, okay. We, we, yeah. We knew that. After, I mean, we, we knew we used yeah. to this. We should be used to this not only with Rick and Morty, but also after book two of Cora. I don't know how we have any hope of like episode titles that make sense ever again. Yeah, that's true. Cora also didn't have not sensical episode titles. Okay. So overall, incredible. Yes. Um, a plus. 
can't plus, wait plus. can't wait for more episodes from this just like i yeah, i think this is the best episode of of the show i i need a rewatch yes. season one again but though the episode with all the ricks was also incredible yeah that's that's one of the contenders i think but do you think this is heads and shoulders above above like, episode two from this season yes and yeah. like just any other episode yeah so i i'd rank it four two one three yes you agree i think so okay um yeah, I, I see. I've I've seen nothing but love from this other other places. I assume, I mean, it's like it's hard to evaluate these types of uh, comedy episodes. I assume this will be seen as the classic, though. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't wait for the following weeks. Like I said in the beginning, this is like ten out of ten, perfect, best episode of TV this year. I mean, that best episode of TV this year. It's competing with um, with Sworn to the Sword, Steven Universe um and and like for me hard home from game of thrones those are like the three i feel like game of thrones had like a for me a bad season overall but there's one like episode eight which just was incredible um but i was it was for me like watching that i was so checked out of the show after the zansa stuff earlier that watching it it was like oh this is i have recognized this as great tv i'm just emotionally not in the show right now though Uh, so it was like a different experience than uh this episode and uh sworn to the sword and steven universe yeah so those are my those are my uh, Dylan's three episodes picks for <laughs> for television. Two of them are animation. That being said, I am mostly almost exclusively watching animation right now because of this podcast. Though so. I mean, mine would probably be like um, St- uh, Steven Universe and Gravity Falls because like all I'm watching is animation except for like when I randomly watch like Humans or whatever, which is also good. There was a pretty good episode of that <laughs> last week. I should watch that show. Yeah, it is. It's I am I'm I'm not like it completely caught up but i've seen like several my family really likes it i mean gravity falls like what would you say is the best episode of gravity falls this year the is it the uh the, i mean there's two options right it's the one where they yep. meet um uh, like it'd be a tale of two stands or yeah, that's, what are um, the names tale of two stands and um and dungeons dungeons and more dungeons oh that was the other one see i don't yeah i mean that episode's really Maybe. good i don't think that's anywhere okay. close to this one though well, not I'm not anywhere near close, but I'm like talking about all the things I watch, like the one, the Falls one before, specific. the one before Tale of Two Stands, though. Um, yeah, that one. Oh, I not feel what like he it's seems. not what it he probably, seems. It's yeah. probably not what he seems. Not not what he seems would be. I like. don't think like yeah, I think Gravity Falls has been very strong this year. Not not uh, this level though. No, That's no, definitely say. not. But like just talking about you know the top three or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would put Steven Universe above Gravity Falls. <laughs> Uh, I mean, in, in general, whatever, like, they're hard to compare. But yeah, Sworn to the Sword, very good. Okay. I meant, like, the episodes that, like, make an impact. Because, like, consistently Gravity Falls, I think, is... It's more consistent, at, I think. Yeah, it's more consistent yeah. in Steven Universe. But yeah. for, like, episodes that make an impact, Steven Universe. I would agree with that. Okay. Um, And I think uh, Rick and Morty's been pretty consistent, too. No, it's... Except for, like, what was it, episode... Whatever episode it was that we were like, eh... Um, which if we weren't even really like, oh, I mean, this last is... week is kind of what we said, but it was yeah. still really good at the end. Yeah. So I think Yurik and Rory's definitely like, we're hitting, it's consistent. We're hitting a stride. Cause like, we definitely weren't expecting an episode like this right now. Yeah. I mean, I just hope every episode's as good as this one. Yeah, we'll it's impossible, about, but we'll have to see about, um, next week, which, uh, the premise of next week is very odd, but like, I mean, are we shocked? No, there's a preview. Yes. I haven't seen it. It's called get swifty. Yeah, oh, of course it is. Um, that's, uh, do you want me to, like, explain the preview? No, it's okay. Well, we can, we can there's a preview out there if you want to see it. I might Actually, it. and that title is legitimately going to make sense in the episode. Yeah, sure Just, it is. No, I promise. Yeah, sure based it is. Based off the preview. Based off the preview, I promise. Yeah, it. sure it is. It is. I mean. I feel like I should make a bet with you. Cause episode just, six is the Ricks must be crazy. So we're back to Rick in, in the titles after that one. Hopefully, there, maybe that'll be the episode with all the Ricks. We already saw all the Ricks, though, in episode but two. Maybe we'll get more Ricks. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. And I know yeah. not, and obviously not all of the preview, not all of the intro material it makes in an episode, but maybe we'll have all those, like, Ricks and, like, whatever. And whatever. Yeah. No, well, you mean in the credits. Yes. I don't think any of it makes it in the episodes. Uh, some of some of them were. In season one? Yes. Okay. I'll trust you on that. I again need to rewatch. So yeah, that's it for. I I kept track while you I kept was track. marathoning. Do you have like a spreadsheet of it? No. That's what I would. I do. Don't, I don't keep track of like you. Would. Yeah, like I would. It's not. I my... had a mental checklist. That's not good enough. You need to formalize this okay. into okay, okay, Dylan, to a okay. list and or spreadsheet. Okay, that's all for total recall. Um, 
Yeah, so I've seen it three times. I'm probably going to watch it a few more. Like, that good. I never watch things more than twice, really, except for... I mean, Cora. I only rewatch things because Dylan makes me. I'm, I don't make you. <laughs> you. It's highly recommended. <laughs> I don't I make do you rewatch it. <laughs> it's a highly recommended, and I do so. Okay. You know, I mean, this show, there's a lot going on, though, this show. I, it's good that we rewatch it at least twice before the podcast. I mean, it's never it's never a chore to rewatch Rick and Morty. Sometimes I will say that, yeah. it was a chore to rewatch some of the episodes, because it was like, oh my, like, book two, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. I'm, I very, for books three and four, though, watching, I watched the, the episodes like three times for Korra. I mean, I've also, five. like, rewatched all of Korra now, like, at least six times. So, like, obviously, I'm not really yeah, complaining. Because you're insane, though, so. It is. I need to, I do need to rewatch Korra, though. Okay, that's it for <laughs> Total Rick Art, the, um OverlyAnimated.com. This is, that's Delaney. I'm Dylan. You can find our social media links and everything at OverlyAnimated.com. And you can support us on Patreon at Patreon.com slash OverlyAnimated. Patreon was down before, but it's up again. Okay. Um, you can... Uh, thanks to our current patrons, Nate Cordell, Shayna, Beatriz... Um, no, it changed, changed the order. Mitch and Andy, who Kurt just uh, pledged to support us. Thank you very much, Andy. Um, that is Nathan Philly and Cordero University, Haina, Beatrix with Strange, Fever Mitch, and... Buzz Lightyear? Is that Buzz what we're Lightyear. going with? Okay, yes, Buzz Lightyear Buzz for now. Said. We'll see. I mean, that's the I obvious reference. I finally got to pick a nickname. I Woo! mean, it's pretty good. Like, that's the obvious animation reference for Andy, you know? Could and we could... just... And y'all just did Y'all just a... did Toy Story, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. That was me making fun of you saying y'all, not me. Actually I know, no, that. I know, Dylan. I'm <laughs> Just aware. explaining it to the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, the running gag is let's make fun of Delaney's accent. Uh, no, that's not. Else. No, I never do it. Don't That, that never happens. Don't worry. No, never. It's, no, never. it never happens. And Woody is um, another possible nickname. Yeah, but, but I think Buzz Lightyear. I don't know. I wanted to do Woody, but... I mean, I, I, but like Buzz Lightyear's the obvious. They're both on their sh- they're both on their shoes, Andy. I mean, I guess people could vote on the whatever. No, we're not doing that. We'll, we'll think about it. We'll think about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else, Delaney? Um, no, the episode was great. Woo. Yeah, very, This. I mean, just the show is incredible. Very excited for continuing Rick and Morty. And Morty coverage. saved the day. Morty did save them. Morty also like, saved the day in episode two, kind of. Right, it, was so, a, it was his own creation, though. You know. But, but yeah. yay, Morty. Yay, Morty. Good job. Um... Yeah, for once, Rick did really have no idea what was going on because he had to try, he had to play catch up to Morty at the end. It was yeah. very strange because, like as we said, Rick is very much a doctor like character, and he I did this did humanize him. You forget Rick's a human sometimes, but yeah, yeah this makes sense that he would not understand. He was like legitimately confused. Yeah, which is good because that would make sense if they can create memories. Yeah, okay. and of course the whole setup with Mister Poopy Butthole. You're like Rick, come on. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> but no, he was right. Yeah, yeah, that's no, great. Okay, thanks. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.